Hello everyone and welcome back to Reading Road. As you can see in front of you, I'm starting work on the car park today and I uh, glued in my chopsticks or matchsticks, whatever you want to call them, just to uh, mark out the area. So I'm all ready to go, all the glue's dried so I can get straight on with, uh, uh, you know, getting on with it and applying the surface. So I'm going to uh, get straight on with it and I hope you enjoy. So after watching several uh, how-to videos on YouTube, how to uh, make like concrete and roads and things like that, I settled to using polyfiller. Um, I've seen tutorials using um, actual real concrete, but uh, the mixes that we used, I just couldn't get hold of in the current time. So in the end, I've just got what I've you know managed to get and I'm just sticking with that. That is my little test piece, which I've shown in the last video. But uh, as you can see, it's not very big, but you know, just maybe get a little bit of experience at least with making roads or concrete with filler. And as you can see, I've um, put some potholes in there as well and just got it all painted up and another pothole there. So I was uh, quite happy to, you know, proceed and do the main thing. Just a quick word though, this isn't going to be a how-to type of video. I personally don't feel experienced enough to go in depth. So you'll see me do it, but I won't go into too much detail. Uh, there's plenty of how-to videos out there. So, you know, just do a bit of research and find what works for you. So, um, yeah, let's get straight on with applying the filler. So I've just finished applying the filler and I'm going to leave it now for about half hour or so to dry. I've got it as flat as I could and uh, obviously I will make it, it will make it even flatter and smooth it out once I sand it down, once it's all rock solid. Inevitably, you'll get the filler in places you don't want it to. So I've got a little tiny bit there and a bit along all the grass around there, but I'm not worried about the grass because I was going to add to there anyway once I've done all this and then a little tiny specks on the fence at the back, but you can't really see those, so I, those, those can slide as well. So uh, I'm quite impressed with myself that I didn't get it everywhere because I had visions of getting it all over the embankment and things like that. So uh, I think a lesson I've learned already is do this before you do like your scenic work. But uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is just I'm going to leave it around half hour to an hour and then come back and then get a scalpel and then I'll just cut down here to separate the wooden chopsticks from the filler because otherwise they'll lock into place and it won't look very nice at all. So uh, I'll get back to you when I come back and remove those. So I've now left it for around an hour and I've come back in. So what I need to do now is just get my uh, craft knife and just score the lines just to separate it. And what this will do is break the bond between the filler and the matchsticks. So then when it's all rock solid and dry, I can come in, in the morning or whenever and just remove the matchsticks and then get on with the sanding and painting. Uh, I won't film doing all this because uh, it's a bit pointless. So uh, I'll get back to you tomorrow when it's all rock solid. So I'm now in the shed the following day and the filler's dried and it's rock solid. Just for good measure. So uh, now the next stage is to remove these wooden chopsticks. So I've just finished removing all of the chopsticks and I just go around with the scalpel and just, you know, gently prise it off and release it from the glue. And then uh, the benefit of scoring that line beforehand, it makes that job so much easier. If you don't do that, then they would bond and you'd have the, the hardest job of your life trying to get them to come away. And you could do a bit of damage as well to the filler. But uh, what I've done as well is I have made a start on sanding it. It's not that obvious because the light in, in this room isn't that great at all at the minute. But um, I did just go over it with a grade 1703 sandpaper. And uh, it has made a hell of a difference. I'm just now going to uh, finish sandpapering and then I'll uh, come back to you. So 
So I've just finished sanding down and I'm happy with how it's looking. If I try and come a bit closer so you get an idea. You're probably wondering or notice that I did do it by hand rather than use a tool and that is because I didn't want it to be ultra smooth. I still wanted it to look, you know, a bit uneven, a bit rough, uncared for, because that's what I've done on my little practice piece. But uh, I'm happy with how it's looking, so I'm now going to uh, just get ready to paint it. So these are the paints I'm going to be using, some white ready mix paint, some black ready mix paint, and I've also got some burnt umber as well, just, if, just to add a bit of brown in there if needed. And I've already mixed up a pot of paint between the black and the white, and I'm gonna start off with a fairly dark tone for an asphalt color, just to give it a bit of color and then uh, go from there. So it's been roughly around 18 hours now and uh, the paint on this has started to dry. It certainly isn't there yet. I used a bit too much white, I think. So uh, obviously I need to get rid of that somehow. There is still little patches of paint drying here and there, uh, particularly down here. So um, yeah, it's obviously not quite finished yet. But what I'm going to do is now add a bit of brown to the area. It's a look on the camera. It's looking a lot darker than what it is, than it actually is. So uh, in real life, it's it looks a bit like a hot chocolate or a well-made cup of tea. So I'm now just going to add this. So here's the state of the car park now. I did apply the watered down paint. I'm just going to apologise for the lack of time lapses. Um, some of them I either lost the footage or others I completely forgot to film and uh, I just crowded on anyway. And also, I, this is just one of them jobs I don't feel 100% comfortable anyway, because, you know, I haven't, if this is the only second, this is the only the second time I've made a car park, so I didn't want to sort of do it, and then it goes totally wrong, if you like. But um, it hasn't gone wrong at all, I don't think. This would probably come out better than the practice piece. But uh, as you can see, all the paint's dry now, and it really is starting to come together. So with the brown paint, I did feel like I overdone it quite a bit. So I used some kitchen roll just to mop up all the excess, but I'd still left a bit just to give it a bit of a brown tinge in places. So if we come down here, you can see little patches of brown, um, you know, more around there as well. And if we come up to the back of the car park, again, a bit more, ever so slight, not overdone. And then down here too, in the corner, you can see a couple of pothole-like structures or whatever there, and that's all caused by having the polyfiller droop in places and, uh, you know, be a bit uneven. So if we just look around the car park, you'll be able to see some rough patches, uh, you know, if you look hard enough. So you've got some there as well. And then if we just come towards the back, some all there, all around there. Oh, it just makes it look a bit worn down. 
and obviously not ultra smooth because roads certainly in the UK down here are not smooth whatsoever. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how you can add potholes by cutting into the filler and they're, they are really simple to do. So I've made a couple of potholes here already just to show you first. So as you can see, I think they do look quite convincing. Just need to be a bit careful. Obviously still you can see where uh, a bit of paint or whatever leaked on the side. But I'm going to show you how I've done these now. And like I said, they are really simple to do. So first you obviously need to choose where you want to put it. And I'm going to put one in this space here. And uh, all you want to do is get your craft knife. Get your craft knife. And then first just sort of score out where you want the pothole to go. Obviously to do it as gently as you can and try not to um, go anywhere you don't want the paint to come off as well. Like that. So I'm gonna have one about there. And then you want to just, depending on how shallow you want it, obviously just come along and just take, cut it all out. Obviously, being as careful as you can to not cut anywhere you don't want to. So I don't know if you can see from there, if I just try and, you know, it won't really focus very well. But there is a, like a hole cut out there. Um, you can sort of see if I like shield the light in a little bit, you can sort of see how it does fall a little bit. So I'm now just going to show the next part, which is, Get some PVA, get like a small paintbrush, dip it into a bottle of PVA, and you just want to apply a little bit in the pothole. And then I get some Woodland Scenics gravel chippings and just get your fingers and just sprinkle it in there. Don't need lots, obviously. Dab it in if you want, just to fill it a bit. And also you want some chippings in there too. And then I'll leave it for a, a bit, a little, little tiny bit. So maybe about a minute or so just to start bonding together. Cause obviously, cause of how little there is, they, you know, it won't take long at all. And then I'm going to get some black wash and just gently just dip it in there at first, just so it can run a little bit. Like so. Just get a little hint of brown in there too. And just dab it in. Just to take off the edge of the black. But obviously you want it to not be white. So. Uh, like obviously, there we go. So that will do I think for now. As you can see, we've got three potholes there now in a form of triangle. So I'm going to, when I come around to detailing the car park, have a few traffic cones in the holes just to mark them out for the drivers or the, you know, that are coming into the depot. So uh, I hope they look pretty good. Obviously, where I spilled the paint on the other on the other pothole, that will dry out and not show as much. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I'm now just going to go over the rest of the car park and just do the same, or obviously not do not go over the not go overboard, but you know just do enough just to create a bit more interest. So that's now all the sort of impurities and potholes done, and to be honest, I only done one extra, which was the one down here, because uh, what I'd done is I just went round searching for impurities or imperfections in the filler. And then I'll just dry brush some dark weathering washes over them just to bring them out a bit more. 
and uh, as you can probably see they act as potholes as well and uh, not as deep so if we just come around you'll see the effect that doing that did so you know there's a got them all over the place really and but tried not to go overboard so you've got some all around here and as we come around some over here in the corner as well so I have tried to uh, scatter them out I haven't gone over every single imperfection so yeah, I've only done the one extra pothole there and I think it looks really good. I tidied up the area around these potholes and what I've done is I just got my finger and I just smudged or just put a bit of pressure on and just smudged around the pothole just to get rid of that obvious ring that spoils it. So if we look now, the pot, you know, there's that ring is more or less gone. I mean, there is still a little bit there, but. And there we go. Let's see if I can get rid of that uh, white stain there as well, maybe. I just thought I'd show you that as well. So there we go. That's more or less the concrete done. I won't be adding to it because I'm really happy with it. It's exactly how I wanted it to be, um, you know, run down, full of puddles, neglected, just needs a good old cancel visit to patch it up and resurface it. So, um, yeah, that more or less brings the video to an end. I'd like to give a big, big shout out to Tim over at the scrap line. Uh, he gave me quite a lot of assistance doing this and I took a lot of advice from him. And uh, he has a fantastic video on his channel showing how he... Uh, made his car park on his layout and I used more or less the same technique with the painting but just added my own little touches to it as well so I'd highly suggest going over to his channel checking him out he's easily one of my favorite youtubers and also one of the best modelers I've seen because uh, he's quite unique in the way he does he does his modeling so uh, he's definitely one channel to check out if you haven't subscribed to him already so in the next video I'll be carrying on with this area and I'll just be making building up all the outside, so all the foliage. And I'll also be adding some little details around the side and also the main details as well, like um, like the cars and some, maybe some figures if I can get hold of some, and just loads of other extras you'd expect to see. So um, till then guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, have modeling and stay safe. Bye.